good afternoon everyone how are you all so today in this video we are going to discuss about the sexual reproduction in plant so let's start the topic so before going ahead you should know the types of flower so one is unisexual flower and another one is the bisexual flower here you can see the differences between them Unisexual flower contain male and female reproductive organ in separate flower whereas in bisexual flower they contain both the male and female reproductive organ in the same flower and the second difference is, is male flower contain stamen whereas female flower contain pistil whereas in bisexual flower a single flower contain anther as well as the ovary so here you can see the example of bisexual flower and unisexual flower. In bisexual flower you can take the example of datura, whereas in unisexual flower the papaya is one of the example. So let's talk about the parts of flower. So starting from the petals and sepal, petals and sepal helps to protect flower and can be brightly colored so that it can attract insect and pollinators. The stem and recipitals connect the flower to the rest of the plant. However, the stamen is the male part of the flower. It consists anther and filament. Anther contain pollen grain in it whereas filament support the anther. Female part of the flower is carpel or pistil and it consists of stigma, style and ovary. Whereas stigma is a sticky landing for pollen and the style is the pathway of pollen grain to move. Whereas ovary is an area where the female gamete or you can say the sex cells are located. In ovary, ovules produce female gametes. Now let's talk about the pollination. So pollination is the transfer of pollen grain from anther to stigma. So now let's understand the work of pollination in brief. So before going ahead, you should know the types of pollination. There are two types of pollination, one is crush pollination and the second one is the self pollination. In cross pollination, the pollen grain from the anther of one flower get transferred to the stigma of another flower. So similarly in self pollination, the pollen grain from the anther get transferred to the stigma of the same flower. So this is the main differences between the cross pollination and the self pollination. You can see the image and can easily identify the differences. Flowers can be pollinated in different ways. It may be by winds and water or by some pollinators. So now who are the pollinators? The pollinators may be the insect, it can be the bird or it can be others animal who are the helping hand for transferring the pollen grain from the anther to stigma. Flowers that are pollinated by the help of wind or water is totally different from the flower that are pollinated by the pollinators. Flowers that are pollinated by the pollinators are more attractive than the flower that are pollinated by the wind and water. They are bright in color because they are supposed to attract the pollinators like insects and birds so that pollination can take place. Once the plant has been pollinated, fertilization can take place. Fertilization is a process of production of seed. A mature pollen grain containing sex cell is landed on the female stigma of the same species. A pollen grain grows a pollen tubes They goes down female style to the ovary where it get entered to an opening which is known as the micropyle. Immediately 
the male sex cell travel down by pollen tube to the female ovule here one male sex cell fuses with the female egg for fertilizing it that further develop into a seed the other male sex cell attach the two cell in embryo sac forming an endosperm this provide sponging fruit seed to grow the ovary enlarge and become the fruit this fruit and seed can dispersed in many ways it may be by wind by water and also by the animal so the seed dispersal and the germination will be discussed on the next video so thank you for watching my video thank you so much